ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dhalala every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dhalalatin fil nar every going astray Every misguidance is in the hellfire from ma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we've reviewed in the last few weeks, this being the fifth week, on the signs of the hypocrite, signs of hypocrisy of nifaq, we will conclude today with some of the signs that we find, of course, with proof from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And the reason we're reviewing these is so we know the evil of nifaq, of hypocrisy. We know its characteristics in order so that we can avoid from becoming pure hypocrites and being in the lowest parts of Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَلَمْ تَجِدَ لَهُمْ نَصِيرًا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَأَعْتَصُمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينُهُمْ لِلَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَسَوْفَ يُؤْتِ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah Verily, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths, the lowest grades of the fire. No helper will they find for them, except for those who repent from their nifaq, from their hypocrisy, and do righteous deeds, and hold fast to Allah, and do good deeds only for the sake of Allah, then they will be with the believers, and Allah will grant the believers a great reward. All of these signs that we're mentioning, are frequently mentioned in the ayat, the, the ayat, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we remind ourselves of this, all of these characteristics. We left off with commanding the evil and preventing the good. This is from the signs of hypocrisy, from the signs of nifaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Al-munafiquna المنافقون, wal-munafiqatu ba'duhum min ba'd. يأمرون بالمنكر وينهون عن المعروف ويقبضون أيديهم نسوا الله فنسيهم. Allah subhanahu wa taala says what means the hypocrites, men and women, they're one from the other. They enjoin the evil and they forbid the good and they close their hands from spending in the cause of Allah. They have forgotten Allah, so He has forgotten them. So we see two signs of nifaq in these in this ayah. The first, commanding the evil and preventing the good. And this is an example when people say, when someone says to them, قال Allah or قال Rasulullah, when they give them proof, when they give them evidences from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that they say, oh brothers, give us a rest. We know the religion, we have knowledge, we comprehend. And so they try to shut the person up who speaks with the book of Allah and the Sunnah of his messenger. They say this, yet their real characteristic is lacking in understanding the deen. They lack this, uh, this, this understanding. So unfortunately nowadays, what gives somebody righteousness, what gives somebody a high status in the people's eyes, is their age, 
or their culture or their nationalism, whereas none give righteousness or give uh, the, the value of becoming righteous through gaining knowledge, through gaining ilm. One of the other signs mentioned in this ayah was tying one's hand out of stinginess. As we mentioned, وَيَقْبَضُونَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ They withhold, they close their fists and their hands from spending in the cause of Allah. And the hypocrites are the most greedy in the matters of doing good in this world. They may exaggerate on spending money on weddings, on funerals, on parties, and the likes of this matter. But when it comes to helping maintain the masajid, to build the school that the children of the ummah direly need, then they're close-fisted and they come up with excuse after excuse. They're stingy, wanting to show off, wanting to spend in the dunya, wanting to hoard money, realizing that it won't go with them to the grave, that they cannot buy Jannah with it unless it's spent in this life willingly and for the sake of Allah. Some not paying the zakat on their wealth that is due to the poor and the needy, so it could purify their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, لَن تَنَارُ الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُ مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not re- achieve the reward of Jannah until you give from that which you love the most. وَعَنْ أَنَسِ بْنِ مَالِكِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتِ ثَلَاثٌ فَيَرْجَعْ أَثْنَانٌ وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدٌ يَتَّبِعُهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمَالَهُ وَعَمَلَهُ فَيَرْجَعْ أَهْلَهُ وَمَالَهُ وَيَبْقَى عَمَلَهُ رواه التمذي وهذا حديث صحيح Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said three follow the deceased two of them will return but one will stay with the one who dies he is followed by his family and his wealth and his deeds so when he dies and he's buried his family and his wealth will return and his deeds will be the only thing that remain with him The wealth you have, what you may hoard, the assets or the portfolio you may be building up, this is only something for you in this life as a test, a trust from Allah to see how you will spend it. It will not follow you to your grave, it will not get you a a wider grave, a grave with furnishings from Jannah, unless you spend it seeking the face of Allah. From the signs of nifaq, of hypocrisy, is forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned priorly, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They don't remember Allah except for very little. They forget Allah. They'll constantly remember their friends and good occurrences from this life. They'll constantly remember times of entertainment and happiness. They'll constantly remember music and songs, wishes and desires, aspirations, and anything from this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَنَسِيَهُمْ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means these who have forgotten Allah, He has forgotten them. Verily the hypocrites are the fasiqoon, they are the rebellious ones who are disobedient to Allah. This sign of nifaq, of forgetting Allah, is from the greatest of the signs of it. In Surah Taha, Allah he said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah says what means, but whoever turns away from my remembrance, from my reminder, neither believes in this Qur'an, nor acts upon it, nor remembers Allah much, verily for him is a life of hardship, and we will raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. قَالَ رَبِّي لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا He will say, Oh my Lord, why did you raise me up blind when in the dunya I could see perfectly? قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى So he will be told, Allah will say to him like this, Our ayat, our proofs, our lessons, our verses, our evidences all came to you, but you disregarded them. You forgot them, you turned away from them, you did not want to be reminded of them. And so on this day, you will be neglected and forgotten away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَسْتَحْوَذَ عَلَيْهِمُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Allah says what means shaytan, the devil, has gained mastery over them and he has made them forget the remembrance of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, The one beloved to Allah is the one who constantly remembers Him. In good times, He praises Him and thanks Him. 
In hard times, he praises them and thanks them and makes dua, supplicates to him for patience and for strength to get through his trials. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu one of the companions, they asked the Prophet sallallahu there are many injunctions in Islam, give me something that I can take hold of and practice. Qala ya la qala la yazalu lisanika ratman min dhikrillah. He said, do not let your tongue cease, cease to be moist with the remembrance of Allah. This is the Muslim, the believer, always should have Allah on his mind. He is praising him and thanking him, making dua to him, seeking forgiveness and mercy from him. So forgetting Allah, this is from the signs of nifaq. From the signs of nifaq is the denial of the promise of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا And the hypocrite will say, Allah says that the hypocrite will say what means that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have promised nothing but deception. The hypocrites claim, claim that Allah and the Prophet وسلم, are only deceiving the people. And this verse was revealed during the expedition of the Ahzab. The Prophet وسلم, the companions were digging a trench. And the Prophet وسلم, came upon a rock and when he struck it with the axe, there was like a, a, a show of lightning, a spark. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, I've been shown two treasures, one red and the other white, and soon they will be presented to my ummah. So the munafiqeen, the hypocrites around them, when this was being said, they looked at one another mocking this statement, saying all we see around, her, all we see around us is that Shostros and Caesar have the wealth and they've been given the treasures. So Allah, He revealed this ayah, وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا This ayah was revealed that says what means when the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease said Allah and His Messenger promised us nothing but delusions. Then Allah made the promise come true and He helped the ummah and the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, so that they conquered vast regions of the earth. Walhamdulillah, and all praises to, due to Allah for this. A concern for the outward appearance and neglecting the inner condition. Before these five weeks on nifaq, we talked about the heart for four weeks. The ayat and the hadith just focusing on the heart. But when someone has a concern for how they look, but they don't care how their inside looks to their Creator, then this is a sign of nifaq. Outward appearance is beautiful, but the inner selves are empty, or corrupt, or deceptive. And people should look good, they should smell good. This is from the characteristics of the Muslim. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَمِيلٌ يُحِبُّ الْجَمَالِ That Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. And there's nothing wrong with this, but He added, in one of those narrations, الْكِبْرِ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ وَغَمْتُ النَّاسِ He added in one of those narrations, that arrogant snow is looking down on the people, putting yourself above them, and to reject the truth. To ridicule the people and reject, and reject the truth. So Allah loves those who are beautiful. On top of that outward manifestation, that there should be a beautification of the inner condition, of the heart, of the soul, where they safeguard themselves from sin, where they remember Allah, where they're sincere in everything they do, when they rely and trust upon Allah. Allah says of the munafiqeen, He says, of the hypocrites, قَالَ وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشُبٌ مُسَنَّدًا Allah says what means, and when you look at them, their exteriors will be pleasing to you. And when they speak, you might listen to their words because they have an eloquence to it. But they are as worthless as a hollow piece of wood that has been propped up. Which ties to the next sign that the, that the, the ulama have mentioned as signs of nifaq, of hypocrisy, is that there's eloquence, a long winding in speech, boasting and bragging, again, tying back to that arrogance. That arrogance that the Prophet he said, مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ ذَرًّا مِنْ كِبْرٍ لَمْ يُرِحْ رَائِحْ The one who has an Adam's weight of arrogance or pride in his or her heart, 
will not smell from the fragrances of paradise. The hypocrites, they have this pride and this arrogance. They boast themselves up. They try to use eloquent speech to soothe, to connive those who listen to them. Allah says, وَإِن يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ He says, when they speak, you listen to their words. They may criticize the Prophet ﷺ. They may criticize certain tafsir or certain explanations of the Qur'an. You might find them mocking tawheed or mocking aqeedah. Or those who redundantly teach this to their students and to the people. When this is of the utmost importance of of matters. Yet they will mock it. They seek greatness by these things. So people can praise them. What a great speaker. I can always listen to them. They always soothe me. And their statements are not قَالَ اللَّهُ وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Their statements are not Allah said or His Messenger ﷺ said قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم الحياء والغي والحياء والغي شعبتان من الإيمان والبذاء والبذاء والبيان شعبتان من النفاق Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said modesty and withholding the tongue, these are two signs from the signs of faith. When you're modest in the way you carry yourself, not just the way you dress, the way you talk, how you live your life in all aspects, this is a sign of iman, and so is withholding the tongue, not speaking unless it's good. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say what is good or be silent. And shamefulness and excessive talk, they are two signs of hypocrisy. Shamefulness, having no care, no regard for immodesty. Having no care, no regard for the society even around you. How loose it is getting, how improper and immodest it is getting. Shamefulness and excessive talk are from the signs of nifaq. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from the signs of nifaq, of hypocrisy, are lacking understanding of the deen. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ He said regarding the hypocrites, but the hypocrites, they do not understand. And this not understanding is not just because they don't want to seek ilm to understand it, but Allah has sealed their hearts. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ يَرُضُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيَرْ يَتَقْطِهُ فِي الدِّينِ رواه Bukhari wa Muslim Prophet Muhammad he said, if Allah wants or intends good for a person, He gives him or her understanding of the religion. The believer understands his deen. He goes back to the scholars to understand and learn and get the hikmah, get the wisdom. He's always trying to increase in knowledge. Covetous to do good and to learn good and to implement good from this deen. From the signs of nifaq, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is not sinning in front of the people because you're afraid of them. From the signs of hypocrisy, is not sinning or doing wrong in front of people because you're afraid of them knowing or them spreading bad news about you. But showing boldness to Allah by committing sins in secrecy. This is from the signs of hypocrisy. The hypocrite does evil actions in secret. But in open, in front of the people, they make it plain to them that they're the exact opposite of that and that they detest the sins that they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means. They seek to hide their sins from the people. But they do not seek to hide their sins from Allah because there's no hiding it from Allah. Whereas He is with them when they plot by day and by night with words that He is not pleased by. The believer safeguards himself from Allah in secret and in open. He knows that Allah is the Sami'a Basir, that Allah is the all-hearing, the all-seeing and can see Him and hear Him even if nobody else is around. We're so bold when we want to sin and we don't want others to know that we plan and we plot, we look for cameras to make sure they're not around. We do everything we can till it's hidden from the people. 
And we're forgetting, as we'll see in Surah Qaf, the explanation tonight during the family night, that we have two angels recording everything we do. And that Allah, from above the seven heavens, above His arsh, He sees and hears everything. And there's no hiding from Him. And that every record, everything we say and do will come in a record, and our lips will be sealed, and the record will speak, and our limbs will speak. And there's no hiding it from Him. The believer safeguards himself. He feels that Allah is the camera always seeing him no matter where he is. Even if he's in a building and he's confirmed that he is alone, he knows Allah sees him and hears him and is fully aware of what he is doing. A poet, he said, وَإِذَا خَلَوْتَ بَرِيبَةٍ فِي ظُلْمَةٍ وَالنَّفْسُ دَاعِيَةٌ إِلَى الطُّغْيَانِ فَاسْتَحْيِ مِنْ نَظِرِ الْإِلَاهِ وَقَوْلِ وَقُلْ لَهَا إِنَّ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الظَّلَامِ يَرَانِي A poet once wrote, he said, when you're in doubt in the darkness, and the soul is calling you to disobedience, then become ashamed, become ashamed from the sight of Al-Ilah, of Allah seeing you and knowing what you're doing, and say to, the, to it, يعني the soul, Indeed, the one who created the darkness sees me. The one who created the heavens and the earth, though he be above his throne, he sees all and knows all and hears all. And from the signs of nafaq is that we do things or we don't do things for people to see or not see. Forgetting that Allah sees us and He knows our true intentions. And from the last of the signs mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is rejoicing at the affliction of the believers with the calamity and being sad when they're touched by some joy or pleasure. This might be a bizarre thought, but unfortunately it's the way that we have become. Allah says, إِن تُصِبْكَ حَسَنَا تَسُؤْهُمْ وَإِن تُصِبْكَ مُصِيبَةٌ يَقُولُوا قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَيَتَوَلَّوْ وَهُمْ فَرِحُونَ Allah says what means, if some good befalls you, it grieves them. But if some misfortune comes to you, they say, we took our precautions, we were smart, we told you not to do this. And they turn away rejoicing. You make it seem that you are hurt or suffering or in pain when bad befalls one of the righteous of the Muslims or one of the people that are doing good deeds, or doing what Allah commanded. You make it seem like you're hurt by it as well, but you rejoice inside. Or arrogantly you say, see, I knew that this would happen to them, if they continued upon such and such a path. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we ask Allah to exempt and protect us from this disease of nifaq, that is of hypocrisy that is spreading through society destroying everything that it touches, especially the younger of the generations. ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Over those five weeks we reviewed these يعني آيات النفاق These signs of hypocrisy I'm going to read through them so we reflect upon them Because they should be all encompassing There is two types of nifaq, two types of hypocrisy. Al-i'atiqadi, the one that's in your belief system, in your aqidah, that you say you believe and you really don't. This, of course, can take one out of Islam. Then there's nifaq al-amani, the nifaq of our actions, which don't necessarily take us out of Islam, but the danger exists that if we persist upon it, that hypocrisy can overtake our heart and our soul. From the signs mentioned were falsehood and lying. Lying, which is so easy. I'm not going to get into these in detail because we did it at the time. But especially because the youth are here and the adults are here. And we shouldn't just say it's to the youth. But many times as adults we teach the youth to lie. 
There's no white lie or black lie, big lie, small lie. A lie is a lie. Even lying to tell a joke we were commanded to not do. Falsehood and lying, treachery, being treacherous in your covenants, in your pacts, being insolent when you argue, vulgar, demeaning, getting loud, breaking one's promise, Remember we mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ stayed in a place for three days because he promised someone he would meet him there until the man came. Because he had given a promise with his tongue. Laziness in ibadah and worship. The masajid, we look at the community, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us more than we could ever enumerate. Yet in Salat al-Isha, which is now at 8 o'clock, it's getting earlier and earlier. And you don't have to stay for an hour like you did in Ramadan. We still make a line. Maybe we get to the second line for a couple of brothers. But mashallah, look at the size of the community. Laziness in ibadah and worship is a sign of hypocrisy. Showing off a riya. This is minor shirk, a sign of nifaq. Lack of remembrance of Allah. وَلَا يَفْرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And they don't remember Allah except for a little bit. That Allah is the last thing on your mind. You don't want to think about Him because what your concern is fulfilling your desires. Hastiness in prayer. We mentioned this over and over and over again. How many khutab we went over about taking your time in the sajda and the rukua, doing them properly. Giving you proof after proof after proof that you lose. That's like a thief stealing from your prayer. Yet we still see the speed in the aspects of salah, hastiness in the prayer. Slandering those who give freely to good deeds, mocking the Qur'an and the sunnah, and the messenger of Muhammad, and the messenger Muhammad wasallam. Again, you do this when you make fun of the growing of the lihya, of the beard, or the raising of the garments for the men, or the women wearing in hijab, modest clothing, the jilbab, the niqab, and the likes of those matters. This is mocking the deen of Allah. The protective oath, al-halaf, the one who says, wallahi to everything. And remember Imam al-Shafi'i was quoted, he wouldn't say wallahi to the things that were true and the things that weren't true. Yet we say wallahi in every sentence just so people believe us, even if it's a lie, it's become a norm. Disliking to spend for the sake of Allah, holding back. We have a masjid that needs to be maintained. We have a school that needs to be built. We complain about what our kids are saying, what they're doing, what they're watching, what they're this, what they're that, and yet we're doing nothing about it. Disliking to spend for the sake of Allah, desertion and abandonment of the Muslims, originating false rumors and causing sedition, finding fault with Allah's qadr, not accepting His decree as good for you, bringing down the honor of the righteous, remaining away from Salat al-Jama'ah, the congregational prayer, causing mischief while you're claiming to establish peace. Outward behavior, contradicting what's in your heart. Fear of unpleasant events, of incidents and happenings happening to you. False excuses, commanding the evil and preventing the good. Tying one's hand by the, behind their back out of stinginess, not wanting to give. Forgetting Allah, denial of the promise of Allah and His Messenger wasallam. Being so concerned with how you look to the people. And boy, this is a whole yani khutbah in itself. How you look, it's okay to look good and to smell good and to be good according to what we're, we, we have as limits from the Quran and the Sunnah. But some people go so far, transgressing Allah's limits, using things or doing things to the body that are haram by the theme that we are upon. Eloquence and long-winded speech, boasting and bragging, lack of understanding in the religion, not sinning in front of the people, out of fear for them, but boldly sinning, knowing that Allah sees you and has angels assigned to you to even be more of a proof against you, even though He has the knowledge without those angels there. And rejoicing at the affliction of the believers with a calamity and being saddened when they're touched with joy and pleasure. These were 30-some signs that the ulama gathered from the Qur'an and the Sunnah that are aspects of nifaq, aspects of hypocrisy. We hear the ayat all the time. We've heard it the last five weeks. That the pure hypocrite, he'll be fiddarkil asfali min al-nar, in the lowest, deepest part of the hellfire. 
وَلَنْ تَجْلَ لَهُمْ نَصِيرًا They will have no helpers to get out of that, out of that situation. <coughs> there's always a fear when there's one opening. It takes a mouse or whatever, the size of a dime or, or whatever they say, that little coin, to squeeze through a crack. Any nifaq in our heart can wind us all the way down to we're pure hypocrites and we seek Allah's refuge and protection from this. So be mindful of it. These aren't saying you're a hypocrite. These aren't saying that if this was once you, it's saying that you might have a characteristic or an aspect of nifaq, of hypocrisy. And it can lead to larger nifaq and larger hypocrisy. Don't do it to yourselves. So that on Yom Al-Qiyamah, whereas others that may have been their destination because of what their deeds were, because that's all we take to our grave, that we, inshallah, bi idnillah, will be of those who learned these signs specifically so we could stay away from them.